seedlings, lots and lots of seedlings. Just a quick update. These are little bill burgess. These are planted on the 15th of this month, so mm, a bit over two weeks ago. Jumping out of their pots already. Doing really well. Another one which always does well, Bromelifolia. These are the green variety. I've already got plenty of reds. Um, so these are fresh sheets that have come from one of my plants. Um, species of Echnia grows huge. They grow really fast. They're already at the top of their containers, so these ones have to be bagged. And then they'll move up to the seedling house. Um, a couple of new hybrids that um, I did a few weeks ago, and these ones were also planted 15th of December. They started germinating after about four or five days, which was just insane. Really warm weather. Um, Dickia, Jono Purple Star, that was planted on the 1st of December. And Dickia Clifton Frost was planted uh, 31st of May, but I replanted them again in December again, and the, the ones in December have come up a lot better. Um, so the temperature was best in December, not May. Um, Elkant, this is uh, Vinnie Colour Cross Arcadian, finally starting to show some signs of growth. These ones are Vampire Crossed with Silver Plum. A few little babies in amongst them. And then what you're looking at here are some Neerogelias. These ones um, are Fairy Tail Cross Two Tone. These were planted um, in the hydroponic room originally um, back in February. So little itty bitty tiny Neerogelias. So all of these are now moving up into the seedling house which I've already taken plenty of videos of um, so I don't really need to show any of those so these are all planted um, coir fibre some of them do contain vermiculite as well which is these little white beads that you're looking at um, or poly... or perlite I should say get these little round beads um, the rest of them are in coir fibre the only ones that are not in coir fibre are this one which are in peat um, and peat I find becomes a little bit too dense over time but remembering these have been in this mix now for 10 months I'm actually going to hand prick those out and put them into fresh mix and then the last tray is elk um, Australiana. I've already got another huge tray of these. This is the second tray. Um, and they're going up there as well. And then the lid of this one may even go back on. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. But there you go. Brief look. Now originally they were being grown here just inside the patio on this rack where they've got um, morning light. Does filter through. But it's quite cool in here. Um, so they're going to go up to the shade house now that it's ready for all of the seedlings and we will see how they go. Okay, so the seedling tunnel is looking pretty good. Okay, so here are all of the babies, there are a large number of them. There's still about 20 or so bags like these ones to bring in yet. Um, but we're making space slowly to fit everything in. Um, this whole area has got its irrigation in. So it's early, it's about seven o'clock this morning and this tunnel is in uh, shade still. This tunnel or greenhouse that I'm standing in is 50% shade cloth um, and it's got a lot of shade also surrounding it so it keeps this area nice and cool perfect place for these seedlings to grow so they won't cop any really high intense heat um, as they're growing out seedlings in this greenhouse range from um, a couple of weeks old which is what these ones here are um, two different forms of bromelifolia these ones um, at the front here are green bromelifolia um, echnia and they're only two weeks old and then the one at the back um, was planted um, the first of November um, and, and they're doing they're twice the size of these guys 
there's also a bag filled with them up here that I'm going to take out and bring in some more bags into this area as well. Um, so we start them off in containers, small containers, but once they reach the lids and start reaching the tops of the containers, uh, the moisture that um, is on the top of the containers um, will cause rot in the plants or fungus to develop. Um, so you can't leave them in the containers and so my solution to that is to bag them um, and then these bags have got a little bit of water as you can see added in the bottom of them and that creates just a little um, environment for them to continue to cycle and stay nice and moist and clearly it's working because the plants inside are doing really well and I haven't had to open the bags and add extra moisture since they went in the bags probably a month ago I suppose so they're doing quite well um, the bags you can buy from I guess eBay would sell them um, on aquarium places hydroponic setups that kind of stuff because they're breathable bags um, so they allow for the exchange as the plants photosynthesize um, and oxygen back and forwards and so the plants don't become stagnant in um, those little seedlings don't become stagnant So, different ones in here. These ones are Alcantaria. Uh, they were planted in July or September. July, I think, of 2000. They were replanted, but they were originally planted um, in September. So, they're doing quite well. And, and I mean September last year. So, they're sort of mm, a bit over 12 months old. Um, there's another tray of Australiana that I've got as well that are not, they were bagged, that have come out of their bag and they're still doing quite well. A few year old Neoregelias and everything else you're seeing are new hybrids um, of Bill Berger that I've um, hybridised. Some Neoregelia and in amongst that Neoregelia there's a couple of really pretty variegated varieties, just a few. So we'll just keep an eye on those. They will probably be the keepers and then what remains will probably either get fed to the goats or mm, I don't know, grow them, we'll see what they look like. Um, this is another batch um, of Neoregelias. But there's also um, some Echmea species here and some more bromelifolias, ecmias and alcantaria hair pups. So they grow really well, especially this time of year they just bound out of their little pots. So now it's a matter of growing them and then selecting out of a grex. This is a grex. And then selecting out of the grex which ones have got um, traits different enough from their parents and that are attractive enough and varied enough to warrant them going onto the market. Those that don't meet the grade will end up being fed to the goats. This one will be fed to the goats. I don't know what it's doing. No, it's weird. Um, so yeah, that's how they're growing. They look pretty good. These ones were all planted last year around the end of last year. They're getting some nice size to them, so it's just a matter of feeding them now. This little container filled with little babies. Eat me a blush. Showing them in videos um, inside when they were all together. This is them now that they've been separated into their little container. Um, and then they'll go from here into a seed plug soon. Hmm. This is more near Regelia. Nice. Anyway, I'm going to go out and turn on the sprinklers, give everything a quick morning drink, just for a couple of minutes. And then now I'm going to go and plant some more seeds to Lansia this time, and I'll just show you how they end up. So this is to Lansia seed that's covering this piece of tree fern uh, stump that um, the tree fern died and so I collected the stump and cut it into different pieces and so this is all of the seed of one variety that I've spread all over it. 
waiting on those to grow. And then this is another stump. And as you can see, little baby Talansi is all over it. These ones are a little bit older, obviously. Um, and they're growing really well, and they just live underneath the irrigation, so they get moist every couple of days. And they're growing really well. So that's how the Talansi is that I'm going to go and put a whole bunch on some flat coir fibre, and we'll see how that goes. Always experimenting. Okay. Oops, just found some more seeds. So these are Tillandsia seeds. That's where I get all my seeds from. This is the Tillandsia seed pod. So I'm just going to have to go and cover that one up before I lose it because when they burst, they just burst open. And there's another one on the other side as well. So these pods will get covered up now. Um, and I need to make some space. Always need to make space. Okay, there's all the bags need to move those two and then my day is done. Bye.